Hello everyone, and welcome to Stuff I Found Interesting. Today's rabbit hole is nuclear propulsion engines. We will cover what they are, their general design, what they are able to use for fuel, pros and cons of implementing them, their different types, and some applications of their use. The simple answer is that nuclear engines use nuclear power as a source of their energy to make the engine go. Nuclear propulsion engines use the heat generated by nuclear reactions to create steam, which powers turbines that drive propellers or generate electricity to power electric electric propulsion systems. Nuclear propulsion can be used in ships and submarines, as well as in some experimental aircraft and space vehicles. Nuclear reactors on ships and submarines typically use highly enriched uranium and heavy water as a coolant and moderator. There are two main ideas for creating a nuclear engine. The first is nuclear thermal propulsion, NTP. This is the type of nuclear propulsion system that uses heat from a nuclear reactor to produce thrust. In a NTP system, the reactor heats a liquid or gaseous propellant such as hydrogen, which is then expelled from the spacecraft to produce thrust. NTP provides high thrust and is well suited for applications that require high acceleration or rapid maneuvering, such as missions that require fast transits. The second is nuclear electronic propulsion, NEP. This is a type of nuclear propulsion system that uses electricity produced by a nuclear reactor to provide power. In a spacecraft design, the NEP would ionize a propellant and accelerate it out of the spacecraft to provide thrust. For naval ships, it would power a propeller on an aircraft carrier or submarine. NEP provides low to medium thrust and is well suited for applications that require long duration, low thrust missions such as deep space missions. NEP also has a high specific impulse, which means that it can provide more thrust per unit of propellant consumed than a chemical propulsion system. This further highlights its benefits on a longer term deep space mission since it is so fuel efficient. Nuclear propulsion can provide a much higher energy output per unit mass than chemical propulsion systems, allowing for much higher speeds and longer operational ranges. Nuclear propulsion systems can provide much higher specific impulse, a measure of efficiency in a propulsion system, than traditional chemical rocket engines. This means that nuclear propulsion systems can produce more thrust on the same amount of fuel or the same thrust for less fuel. On a typical trip to Mars, a spaceship would use about half of its energy just breaking Earth's orbit. When the cost of leaving Earth's gravity well is so high, either lightening the load to get to space or doing more with the same amount of fuel can breathe new life into longer space missions. Since nuclear propulsion systems have a much higher energy output per unit mass than chemical propulsion systems, they can allow for much longer operational ranges without the need for refueling. Again, the ability to do more with less is something that pays dividends. Nuclear propulsion systems can also provide much higher speeds than traditional chemical propulsion systems, which can be useful for applications such as interplanetary missions or high-speed reconnaissance. These higher speeds are also attributed to the efficiency of the engines in comparison to the existing chemical engines. Cutting down on the time it takes to get places in the vastness of space not only allows for more to be done on those missions, but also reduces the chance of something going wrong, either by freak occurrence or a failure of any of the systems on board. Nuclear propulsion systems do not require oxygen to burn fuel, unlike traditional chemical propulsion systems. This means that they can operate in space where there is no air. Nuclear propulsion systems use nuclear fuel, typically in the form of highly enriched uranium or plutonium instead of oxygen. The energy released by nuclear reactions in the fuel is used to heat a liquid or gaseous propellant or generates electricity for electric propulsion systems. Nuclear-powered spacecraft can generate their own power and propulsion and do not need to carry all their fuel with them. This allows them to be launched from any location, not just from a specific launch site. In the short to medium term, we will likely still solely use the various launch sites that we currently maintain. It makes sense to do so since there is already a ton of monitoring equipment in place. In the long term, when space travel is either commercialized or otherwise incredibly common, there won't need to be specific launch sites. Pilots would likely just coordinate with the nearby air traffic controllers to ensure a clear path wherever they are going. On the negative side of things, nuclear propulsion systems are more complex and expensive to build and maintain. This is because they require specialized materials and equipment, as well as highly trained personnel to operate and maintain the reactors. Most of the parts need to be shielded from radiation to prevent degradation, along with the entire engine needed to be shielded from the rest of the ship. Nuclear propulsion systems pose significant safety and security risks as they involve handling and storing radioactive materials. Accidents or sabotage involving nuclear propulsion systems could result in the release of radioactive material and cause harm to people and the environment. Additionally, the highly trained individuals in charge of doing the maintenance of the engines cannot spend too much time around them due to radiation concerns. This requires a larger group of engineers that need to work in shifts to cover any maintenance issues that crop up 
up over the lifetime of the engine. The use of nuclear propulsion systems, especially in military applications, raises concerns about the proliferation of nuclear weapons and the potential for nuclear war. It also ensures that more radioactive materials like uranium and plutonium are needed for fuel. With more of these materials being stockpiled, there is a greater risk of something going wrong. Nuclear propulsion systems produce nuclear waste, which must be safely stored and disposed of for thousands of years. While the nuclear waste is a significant issue, it is not insurmountable. Already, there are nuclear waste bunkers that can hold enough waste over a significant period of time for the bunker itself to be worthwhile. These bunkers are functionally no different from landfills, but take a fraction of the space. Once a bunker has been filled, it can be sealed off and left alone with next to no maintenance. Nuclear reactors are also heavy, bulky, and require a large amount of space compared to traditional propulsion systems. This negative is mainly due to how young the technology is. As we continue to create more nuclear reactors and engines, we will get better at it. We will continue to iterate until we can generate orders of magnitude more energy from the same footprint or condense the same output into a much smaller space. At the moment, most reactors are fairly large and will likely need to be reworked to be able to fit in some form of spacecraft. The high cost of enrichment and handling of nuclear fuel can also be a drawback of nuclear propulsion systems. The enriched uranium and plutonium used as fuel is a money and labor intensive process. Over the lifetime of the nuclear engine, the cost of fuel will likely end up being smaller than creating and using the equivalent of traditional chemical fuels. Nuclear propulsion systems are also subject to international regulations and treaties, which can limit their development and deployment. Not all countries have access to nuclear technology. There are many reasons behind that, but from a purely technological front, we are limiting the amount of brain power that we can dedicate towards the nuclear engine problem. Additionally, all the countries that do have nuclear technologies do not always share their information or breakthroughs. This further handicaps development of newer and better ways to utilize the technology. The distance a spacecraft equipped with a nuclear propulsion engine could travel would depend on several factors, including the specific design of the propulsion system, the amount of fuel it carries, and the mission requirements of the spacecraft. In general, a nuclear propulsion system can provide a much higher specific impulse, which is a measure of the efficiency of a propulsion system than traditional chemical rocket engines. This allows a spacecraft to travel much further than it would be able to using chemical propulsion alone. Nuclear propulsion systems can also provide much higher speeds than traditional chemical propulsion systems. For example, the proposed nuclear thermal propulsion system, which uses heat from a nuclear reactor to produce thrust, is estimated to have a specific impulse of 900 to 1000 seconds, compared to 450 seconds for the most advanced chemical propulsion systems. This would allow a spacecraft to travel much farther and reach higher speeds than it would be able to using chemical propulsion alone. However, it is important to note that the implementation of nuclear propulsion is not as simple as mounting a nuclear reactor on a spacecraft and sending it on its way. The technology is still under development and has not been used on any operational spacecraft yet. The mission requirements and the destination would also play a role in determining the distance that could be traveled by a spacecraft using nuclear propulsion. For example, if a spacecraft is only going to Mars, it would need less fuel and less specific impulse than a spacecraft going to Pluto. The needs of the mission would dictate either the size of the engine or the amount of fuel it needs to carry around. Both factors would be crucial to know before any design is finalized. If we assume a steady supply of fuel, the lifetime of the reactor would depend on the type of reactor and the specifics of the design. But most reactors are designed to run for at least several years. However, in the case of spacecraft, several factors such as radiation shielding, thermal management, and safety concerns might limit the lifetime of the reactor. Additionally, it is important to note that even with a steady supply of fuel, the nuclear propulsion system would eventually need maintenance, which would limit its lifespan. Everyone always thinks of Chernobyl or Fukushima when the topic of nuclear reactors malfunctioning comes up. Here are some of the things that I could think of going wrong with a spacecraft's nuclear reactor and engine. If the reactor itself were to malfunction, it could potentially cause a loss of power or a release of radioactive materials. If the propulsion system were to malfunction, it could cause a loss of thrust or control, which would make it difficult or impossible to maneuver the spacecraft. If the fuel system were to malfunction, it could also cause a loss of power or a release of radioactive materials. If the radiation shielding were to malfunction, it would expose the spacecraft and its crew to dangerous levels of radiation. If the thermal management system were to malfunction, it could cause the reactor to overheat or the spacecraft to become too hot or too cold, which would damage the spacecraft systems or make it difficult for the crew to survive. If the control or monitoring systems were to malfunction, it could make it difficult to detect or diagnose problems with the propulsion system or the reactor, and it could make it difficult to control the spacecraft. What about the small adjustments we see during a SpaceX mission or when a ship docks with the International Space Station? Will a nuclear engine be able to make those fine adjustments? The thrust provided by a nuclear propulsion system would depend on the specific design of the propulsion system, but in general, nuclear propulsion systems have the potential to provide a high level of thrust control. NTP systems, which use heat from a nuclear reactor to produce thrust, have been studied by NASA and other space agencies. These systems use a liquid or gaseous 
surface propellant such as hydrogen, which is heated by the reactor to produce thrust. The reactor is able to control the temperature and thus the rate of heating of the propellant, which allows for precise control of thrust. NEP systems, which uses the electricity produced by a nuclear reactor to ionize a propellant and accelerate out of the spacecraft to produce thrust. The thrust is controlled by adjusting the power level of the reactor or the rate at which the propellant is ionized and expelled. It is important to note that these examples are based on the hypothetical situation of a nuclear propulsion system, as this technology is still under development and has not yet been used on any operational spacecraft yet. In theory, a nuclear engine would not have any issues and the very smart people at NASA and JPL would test these types of things extensively before ever putting it on an actual spacecraft. NASA has recently partnered with DARPA to create a nuclear-powered engine to use on future Mars missions. The first is currently scheduled to launch in 2027. This design is thought to shorten the time it takes to get to Mars from 9 months down to 45 days. NASA's Artemis program, which is dedicated towards getting humans back on the moon, is also looking to implement a nuclear electric propulsion system. They see this step as a natural progression from the current designs using a solar propulsion system used to extend the time missions have in orbit with their more fuel-efficient designs. Both systems use electricity to ionize gases for thrust. Nuclear submarines and aircraft carriers are powered by onboard nuclear reactors. Like all nuclear reactors, the radioactive material generates heat, which is converted to steam. The steam is then used to move a turbine, which generates power for the propellers. There are also secondary turbines that provide power for the rest of the submarine and ship. In conclusion, we are already starting to implement nuclear reactors in our existing technology. In making further advancements, we will be able to have more things powered by nothing but their own nuclear energy. I am excited about the potential for nuclear-powered spacecraft as it opens the door to longer and farther reaching space missions. In using the added speed and efficiency that nuclear power gives us, we have the ability to push the boundaries of what is currently possible in space. Those technological leaps will trickle down into our daily lives and give us more cool stuff to play with. Thank you all for watching. Please let me know if I missed anything or got anything incorrect. I would love to learn more. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing. If you didn't like what you heard, thank you for listening this far. Time is everyone's most precious resource, as no matter who you are, you only get 24 hours in a day. Thank you for spending a portion of it with me. See you next time.